President Trump announced his support today for a bill called the First Step Act. It will provide new incentives for low-risk inmates to learn the skills they need to find employment. It's out of character for Trump to show sympathy for people who've been convicted of crimes. And when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, I said, please don't be too nice. But his endorsement is the latest sign that criminal justice reform is now a mainstream and bipartisan issue. A major part of recent reform efforts is a push to rethink one of the basic elements of the American detention system, cash bail. It's a uh, Monday morning, beautiful weather, and we have a Kennedy in Brooklyn in front of the Brooklyn Detention Complex. What's happening? What's going on today? Well, we're here conducting the largest bailout in the history of our country. Hi, I'd like to post bail, please. I just went in and started the process to bail out a woman. She's there only because she's too poor to make bail. Yes. Well, you want to pay for yes. bail? Yes, yes, please. On October 1st, the RFK Human Rights Organization, led by Carrie Kennedy, the daughter of Bobby Kennedy, set out on a month-long, unprecedented mission to bail out hundreds of women and juveniles from New York City's notorious jail complex, Rikers Island. 80% of the people who are at Rikers Island are there awaiting trial. And the only reason they're there is because they can't afford to make bail. You know, in this country, if you live in poverty, you lose your right to uh, be innocent till proven guilty. And that's really what we're trying to address. We're, we're all set. We'll be back. Thank you so much. First bailouts this morning went great. Then we followed up with a bunch of volunteers going to the bail window at the Brooklyn Detention Center. I've paid a, a few bails in New York, a fair amount, and this was the fastest bail paying experience I've ever seen. Wow. They, they got through really quickly, which I think says something about what happens when you bring cameras <laughs> and like on. rich people to the bail window. But Kennedy, like anyone else who's not a bail bondsman, can only spring two people a month. So bailing out hundreds of people in a matter of weeks means recruiting 200 volunteers. But it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, all you need is an ID and a very patient temperament to pay bail. And the money, right? The cashier's check that you will or will not run off with. Will not. All right, good. I did my job. Hi, everybody. I just want to know when can I start? <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Wade McMullen and former Obama strategist Kerry Twig are running point on the mass bailout. How do you all choose who's going to be bailed out? We don't. Out? They choose, right? So, so we have we have stated that we are willing to post bail for anyone who's eligible, um, and we have talked to the folks on the island and those who opt in. We will do what we can. This is the organization's first mass bailout but it's been bailing out individuals like Pedro Hernandez since last year. Pedro was 16 when he was arrested for attempted murder. He insisted he didn't do it, and the charges were eventually dropped, but not before he spent 12 months at Rikers. And there is it's a different environment. It's not like you could just sit down and watch TV all day. You gotta sit down and watch your back, or be on the phone and watch your back, come out the shower and watch your back. How many people do you know of that are in the same position at Rikers that you were in? The kids I was housing with in there, I, I know a few of them that's in the same position that I was in. If my attorney, Alex Spyro, or the RFK Human Rights Organization would never stepped in the picture, I think I'd have just been another kid still sitting in Rikers hoping to see the freedom and the day of light again. We have the resources to bail out 100, 200 people off of Rikers Island, okay. right? right. And we ensure that a social worker goes and meets with them to assess their needs and what they need to responsibly and safely transition back to their community and wait for their trial and finally achieve due process in their case. 75% of the people on Rikers are eventually released without ever being sentenced to prison, which suggests that most of the people there aren't really a threat to public safety. But the fact that RFK will bail out anyone no matter what crime they're accused of, troubles law enforcement and top prosecutors. We sat down with Elias Usamadine, president of the union that represents correction officers in New York, including those working at Rikers. 
why would you want to subject the community to these people when the community have finally found some peace by these particular people not being able to roam the community and, com and, and commit the crimes that they're in for? All of these crimes are alleged crimes that they have not yet been found guilty of. Tell me who you're bailing out. That's all I'm asking. The Kennedy family, the people that they're bailing out don't live next door to them, don't live around the corner from them. Are you just as concerned with public safety when a rich person bails themselves out as you are with the person who doesn't have the means, who can't bail themselves out? Yes, I think the law should be evenly and equally applied. Now, how do we make that happen? I guess that's for minds greater than mine. We could sit here all day and have a discussion about uh, what's wrong with the criminal justice system. We can, but at the end of the day, brother, there's a freaking community out there that feels safer, that these people are locked up. Raku works at a store in lower Manhattan. A few months ago, he says a woman came in, started stealing clothes and pulled a knife on him. The alleged thief was arrested and was being held at Rikers on a $50,000 bail. That's until RFK bailed her out. Have you seen her since? Since being bailed out by RFK, the alleged thief skipped bail. And a new warrant is out for her arrest. RFK would not comment on specific cases. What happens if someone jumps bail? You know, that's a risk we're willing to take. And we're willing to bet on the people that um, we are bailing out. It's not, quote, skin in the game that gets people to come back to court. It's literally, like, do they have a ride? Do they have someone to take care of their kids? Can they get off work? Law enforcement, chief of police, correctional officers, you know, they're talking about this is a threat to public safety. Is it? I'm not surprised, Yeah. right? Um, uh, that there are public officials using the term public safety and talking about the most sensational cases uh, and essentially fear-mongering to paint a whole uh, host of individuals with a very broad brush. If politicians really thought that um, the type of charge or accusation was determinative of whether someone posed a risk to public safety, um, there'd be rich people charged with serious crimes on Rikers.